Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sri's daily global COVID-19 show. My name is Sri Srinivasan, and it's my honor to convene this daily conversation with folks around the world. If you're watching live, we are here a little early. We're 12 hours early, but you can watch us at any time. We're so grateful to you for being here with us. Please share this with your friends around the world. On this show, we discuss three crises, the health, financial, and inequality crises. We're always looking for guests and theme suggestions. Today's episode is really special. It's episode number 143. We've been on the air for 143 straight days. No vacation, no holiday, right through this pandemic. And today we're going to be talking about the world of work and the way in which you can think about being an inventor. It's called the inventor in you. And my favorite inventor is here, Charles Cunnan Carroll, author of The Inventor in You, a step-by-step -step guide to your first invention, holder of more than 70 patents and my New Jersey godfather. I am so thrilled that you're going to meet him. Right now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to share this on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Anybody in the world can watch now or watch later. We want you to share this so that as many people in the world can benefit as possible. You may not think you're an inventor, but Charlie will help you find that inventor in you. This is going to be so exciting. Hi, everyone. I'm Sri, and I'm the Marshall Loeb Visiting Professor of Digital Innovation at Stony Brook School of Journalism, and I'm co-founder of DigiMentors, a social, digital, and virtual events consulting company. Our motto, don't cancel your in-person event, and don't even think about planning your virtual event without talking to us. My email address is right here. Write to us. We would love to give you advice. We'd love to be part of your production company. We can be 10% of your production or 110% of your production. We've done projects for 50 people and for 100,000 people. That's right, the world's largest gathering of teachers, T4. We were honored to put that together for our friend Vikas Pota. Please check out our work. Our website is digimentors.group and email me sri at sri.net. And you can find me on Twitter at sri. We are live right now on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, and on LinkedIn. You'll meet Charlie in just a few minutes. Tell us how you're doing. This is an early show for us if you're watching live, watching on the recording, it doesn't matter. But we're 9 a.m. in New York instead of our 9 p.m. show. We are so thrilled that you are here. I am grateful to everyone who supported us these 143 days. Many of you have written in to say this show is something that you look forward to. Some of you call the show helpful. Many of you have called it a lifeline. And I wanna tell you that this show is my lifeline. This show has helped me. This show has saved me through this pandemic. It's been my wife, my kids, our dog, and you. So thank you all for being here and for supporting us. We're so grateful. Now, if you're new to us, or even if you've watched a lot of our episodes, here is some background about the show. We run on scroll.in, one of India's leading news analysis and cultural websites. Please check them out at scroll.in. We've had more than a million viewers. We've had 100 million social impressions. We've had 260 guests from 53 cities and 15 countries, including the chief scientist of WHO. Doctors, nurses, authors, journalists, CEOs, founders, teachers, professors, and all of this because people have supported this show. You can find our entire archives on youtube.com slash 3 We couldn't have done this show without our two producers, Rose Horowitz at Rose Horowitz 31 and Vandana Menon, at Vandana underscore Menon. The two of them kind of uh, volunteered 140 days ago to help out. They had no idea what they were getting into. And here they are 143 years, 
It feels like 143 years, but just 143 days later as we are bringing you the show. Please be in touch. We'd love to collaborate, love to hear your ideas. And we want to hear from you for speaker ideas as well as sponsorship ideas. Speaking of sponsors, we want to thank our sponsors. First off, let's thank our friends at Nunbelievable, Divinely Delicious Cookies on a Mission. Each box of handcrafted cookies purchased provides two meals to those in need. Get 20% off with the code SRE, S-R-E-E. -E. Nunbelievable.com, Divinely Delicious Cookies on a Mission. We also want to tell you about some of our friends who have shows that we work with. So right after this episode, you will see at 10 o'clock on his channels, our friend Stefan Kaplan will have the Spin It Social Hour, talking about photography and social media. He'll have his students from the FIT, the famous Fashion Institute of Technology. They'll be here at 10 a.m. Eastern on his channels. Find it at Spin It Social. Then tomorrow morning is the show that started it all for us, the New York Times Read Along. We read the New York Times out loud, like crazy people, at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. Our special guest is Matt Goldman, New York Times bestselling author and Emmy award-winning TV writer. Credits include Seinfeld, Ellen, and the new adventures of old Christine. That's the show that some of you know is a show that Julia Louis-Dreyfus went on from Seinfeld before she hit Veep. She was in the new adventures of old Christine. So please tune in for those shows. And on Sunday night, we always do Sunday night positivity, where we try to be positive with all the rotten things going on in the world. All right. Are you ready to meet our guest? You will in about 30 seconds, because first we have one final, uh, one or two more announcements. We want to remind you that after our 8.30 a.m. show ends at 11 a.m. Eastern on Sundays, we host She's On Call. Two of my surgeon friends, Dr. Sujana Chandrasekhar and Dr. Marina Kurian, they host a fabulous new show. I'm honored to be co-executive producer. It's called She's On Call, and they have this week uh, on their agenda to talk about what's happening with school openings, what's happening with the coronavirus, and they have two guests, Dr. Benjamin Chang, who performed the, one of the first hand surgeries hand transplants in the world, and Dr. Claudette Lejam will be with us, an orthopedic specialist. So all four doctors tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern. Please connect with at She's On Call. And now our final ad. Start Premier Nights. Watch the year's biggest blockbuster streaming straight to your screen, exclusively on Hotstar. Hotstar.com slash US. What if one day you found a bag full of cash and you're faced with a dilemma to take it or not? Would you take it? Watch Loot Case, premiering and streaming right now exclusively on Hotstar.com slash US at Hotstar USA. All right, enough wind up. Time now to meet Charlie. We are so delighted that we can bring him on here to meet with you today. He's the author of The Inventor in You, a step-by-step -step guide to your first invention. And he's the holder of more than 70 patents. Please tell us where you're watching from. Please say hello so that he can meet you. He's watching from New Jersey and he is my godfather out of New Jersey. Please say hello, everyone, to Charlie. Hello. Hello, Sri. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing great. It's great to be in your show. It's a privilege and an honor. And uh, I'm, I'm doing great in spite of what's going on. Um, we are getting used to the uh, normal, uh, normal uh, new life. Um, my wife uh, worked from home uh, doing uh, uh, telemedicine 
so we I get to see her more often now. Uh, every day in the evening, I make sure we play pickleball in our driveway. I convert a driveway into the pickleball court, and we spend uh, one hour every day. And that's great. The only problem is we don't get to see our kids uh, uh, as much as we like to see it. Although we have a uh, FaceTime with the grandkids uh, so often. So other than that, we are doing great. It is our new normal. Yes. I only heard the word pickleball in the last few months. So I need to be schooled in pickleball. We have people watching around the world, uh, some of whom are watching from places where pickles mean different things. I remember my brother, when he was a little kid in school in New York, he was asked to uh, draw his favorite food and the teacher was, would draw the food, but they had to say what it was. So uh, he said, pickle and rice. And the teacher drew a cucumber and he started crying because that's not the pickle he meant. In America, pickles mean cucumbers that have been pickled. Right. For those of us from India, pickles mean something else. They mean the 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 spicy chutneys and uh, and, pickled, right. and pickled and uh, pickled goods that we uh, we eat. So, uh, but pickleball is new, so we must get that out of the way. What is pickleball? Well, it is the uh, new tennis for the seniors. Uh, it's about half the size of a tennis court, and you see a, a a plastic ball, same size as the tennis ball, but very light, like the ping pong ball, and you use a small paddle rackets. A very exciting game, one of the fastest growing sports in the United States, and all the seniors are getting into it. So being a senior, <laughs> that's my thing. Well, we we uh, I look forward to watching you play that one day. Uh, do you want? Oh, you, you can come over and uh, we have have a match. <laughs> uh, you've been very kind, by the way. We should tell people you've been inviting us to come over, but we don't want to infect you. You don't want people from Manhattan coming into oh. your nice suburban house uh, and an environment where you're safe in lockdown. Uh, one of the things that happens, of course, is all the younger. Uh, the, the adult children are calling their parents saying, lock yourself in. So I know you get that advice from your kids and family uh, as, as well. So we've got a lot to talk about. We haven't seen each other since the pandemic. And I decided that uh, you are always so well dressed, even when you're relaxing at home, that I had to break out a new I sleep shirt. like this. <laughs> yeah, you sleep like this. <laughs> so I decided I had to break out a new Bombay Shirt Company shirt. Many of you know that I... Uh, worked with the Bombay Shirt Company uh, for a couple of years as I did my world tour. This is a shirt that I paid for because I love their shirt so much. So uh, yeah. this is the miracle of things. Uh, There's a custom made shirt that I ordered on Thursday and it arrived here by Wednesday. So just one week in the middle of pandemic, handmade in, in, in India and it's yeah. here. And I'm not being paid to say that. Unlike all those other ads, this is a fan talking about the Bombay Shirt Company, bombayshirts.com. Check check them out. This I even put in an elbow patch to feel like <laughs> I was great. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle. Uh, we have a lot to talk about. Your book, which I have here, The Inventor in You by Charles Cunnan Carroll, a step-by-step -step guide to your first invention. And some people watching this may be a little apprehensive because they're saying, well, we're not inventors. This show is not for us. So first thing I want you to do is sell this show to okay. people who think that I'm not an inventor. How can I learn anything from this show? So I'll let you go first, and then I will talk about why I invited you. OK, great. Uh, well, um, I'm a research scientist by profession. And for the past 45 years, I um, uh, conducted research. Uh, trying to develop new ideas and solutions to meet the consumer demand. And during this time, I have been very fortunate to have come up with more than 300 ideas, solutions, products, and processes, which were protected by 85 patents. Sri mentioned that I have 70, pa 70 patents. That's a long time ago. It's 85 patents now. OK, time out. So <laughs> let me first apologize for that. I cannot keep up with you. When I first met you, uh, you only had 10 patents, and I thought, oh, my God, I'll never meet somebody with 10 patents. And you have 85 patents, including products that hundreds of millions of people have touched, maybe billions of people. And we're going to show them examples of that in a couple of minutes. So get ready for that. Things that you have used, folks, you are going to see the man who helped put that together. 
Invention, of course, is a team sport, right? Everybody participates, lots of people. Uh, you build it together. But Absolutely. this man has 85 patents to his name, and you're going to hear about them. So I interrupted you as you were telling us yes, that sir. you have 85, not 70 patents. Right. And, and numerous trade secrets. Uh, uh, but during this 45 year, year period, I've been very fortunate to have uh, more than 300 ideas. And, and uh, some of them came uh, turned into, into patents and some of them turned into trade secrets. I still have uh, about 25 trade secrets that uh, the company keep it as a secret so nobody can copy it uh, and, and do that. So, uh, so what, what I was uh, trying to say that uh, during this time, uh, this helped me to, uh, uh, to come up with these ideas. And I, when I retired, I felt that I have gained an incredible amount of valuable information, knowledge, and experience in the field of invention. And I felt it is important to share that information with others who may benefit from it. And with that thought, I documented all this information and published them in my book, The Inventory in You. As Sri said, this is a step-by-step -step guide on how to identify a problem, how to come up with solutions, and how to take that solution and turn into an invention. And finally, how to protect that invention. And my goal is to inspire the readers and motivate them to come up with uh, their own invention. But um, one of the reasons for that is that I strongly believe there is an inventor in all of us, regardless of who we are and what we do. Uh, you don't have to be a scientist, a scholar, or a genius to be an inventor. Many of the invent inventions were carried out by uh, ordinary people without any special education or training, and even by children at a varying age. Uh, you probably heard about Dr. John Goodenough. He invented the alkaline battery when he was 96 years old. And on the other extreme, a six-year-old boy, boy, Robert Patch, invented a toy truck, which became a huge hit in the toy industry. And, and I'm always fascinated by a 10-year-old girl. Uh, I like to sh share, uh, share a story. This is my favorite story. She was a cancer patient undergoing chemotherapy in a hospital bed. And she had the uh, needles stuck on the arm and attached to a couple of IV bags. Anytime she moved around, she has to grab all the tubes in one hand and push the IV stand with the other. And she found this very annoying, uncomfortable, and inconvenient. One day while moving around like this, one of the tubes was broke loose and she tripped on it, fell down and got hurt. When she got up, she was very upset. And she said to herself, I wish somebody would come up with a better way to do this. And that was a key. And when she, uh, she went to bed with that thought, staring at that IV stand, she noticed her backpack uh, lying on a table right next to it. That backpack gave her an idea. When the nurse came by, she uh, asked the nurse if she could remove those IV bags from the backpack, uh, uh, from the stand and attach to the backpack. Then folded all the tubes inside and she got up and put on the backpack and started to walk freely. No more holding on to the tubes, no more pushing the IV stand. She could even climb the steps while still getting the IV drips coming from her backpack. The nurse was impressed and the parents were excited and they helped her to apply for a patent. And this 10 year old girl was granted a United States patent for her invention, which she called the Ivy Pack. So the, the, I mean, here we see a little girl who did not even have a high school education, came up with a great idea to solve the problem that she was facing. And all she had to do was to use her common sense, a little bit of imagination, and with a strong desire to solve the problem. And normally, that's all it takes for anybody to come up with an invention. So that takeaway from the story is that what you learn is how you use your knowledge. That's important. All right, so we want everyone. Thank thought. you. <laughs> thank you. I want everyone watching right now to share this with their friends. One of the reasons I wanted Charlie, I'm calling him Charlie, but he's Charlie uncle to me. Uh, we wanted him here is because people are feeling the pain, right? Not just the pain of the 
health crisis, but the pain of the economic crisis. And people, uh, I wanted inspiration. And Charlie, I'm always inspired by every time I spend any time with you. And this is the book. I also had the honor of writing the foreword for this book. Thank and you, and I'm honored. <laughs> no, it was my honor. I wanted to read a couple of lines from it because it'll explain what we're about to show you. We're gonna show you some of his patents and you're gonna say, oh my God, I use that and I use that and I use that. We're gonna show them all to you in just a couple of minutes. So uh, stay tuned for that. Please tell your friends to watch us. Just tag them on Facebook. They can watch this later uh, if, if they are, cannot watch this now. And uh, I, what I said is that invention and innovation are in the air these days. Everywhere we look, we see people doing startups, ads for inventor kits, and people taking the plunge into entrepreneurship. Of course, this was all written uh, a couple of years ago. Never in human history has it been possible to have an idea, make it come alive, and get it to market as fast and as cheaply and as easily as it is today. And that's what one of the things you'll learn in this book. And I talk here about my, my work as a journalist and alleged innovation guru. I have the title innovation in my job, but nothing like you. I've had a chance to speak with some of the greatest innovators of our time. Designer Tory Burch, Microsoft's Bill Gates, Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, and, and the co-founders of Instagram, Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger. And I worked for many years with Joe Ricketts who created Ameritrade and all of them embodied the five words in Charlie's special program that he's gonna tell us about. The program is called AIMIP, Ambition, Imagination, Motivation, Inspiration, and Persistence. So we're gonna talk about all of that. And I said in this book that inventors in small towns in faraway countries may no longer need to come to the US to succeed, but I'm so glad that once upon a time, it was essential for a young Charles to make that journey and change our lives in so many ways. He's done the difficult work of distilling his experience and giving us the invention roadmap. Your picking up the book is the natural next step. Now comes the fun part, the reading, followed by the harder, tougher work, but the more satisfying work, the doing. So let us now start by, and again, everyone, the book is called The Inventor in You, available at all uh, fine online stores, your favorite independent, a bookstore. We want you to stay safe when you're getting your books. And it's called a step-by-step -step guide to your first invention. So let's talk about some of the inventions. We've got some photographs we want to share. So we're going to sh uh, show that. Are you ready, Charlie, to do that? Yes. Okay. So we're going to start by um, telling, we should tell people you work for, you worked for a company called Sealed Air. And Sealed Air is a company that invented one of the most useful things in our lives. And the story starts there in 1960 by the person who invented what? Well, the, uh, the person who invented uh, was my ex-boss. Uh, his name is Al Alfred Fielding. There's an uh, interesting story about this invention. When he came up with this product, he didn't know what to use it for. He thought it was a very fancy uh, film and the initial original idea was to use it as a wallpaper. So he started a small company and started to sell as a wallpaper. And after several years, he could not generate enough sales and see he was uh, ready to close down the business. One day he was playing with this bubble and he accidentally popped one of the bubble. Then he realized that it has a great cushion properties and could be used as a uh, packaging product. The rest is history. Today, bubble wrap is one of the most commonly used packaging product in the entire world. So th that, that was the, the original invention. So- And everything I, started there, right? So sealed air, sealed air is the sealing of air in inside air. Right. the That's bubble the wrap. Right. That's how the name came. Right. So Charlie was too young to have invented bubble wrap, but he joined sealed air one day. And then along with his friends and colleagues, helped change history by the products that came out of his shop of, uh, or his workshop at Sealed Air. So let's talk about some of them. You tell me which one you want me to bring on first. Well, uh, the, uh, the inflatable bubble, right. The, uh, 
the story behind this is um, as the company grew, we had we were getting more and more competition, and um, and at the same time the gasoline price went up, and we found it very expensive to ship this bulky lightweight product from the manufacturing location to the customers. Uh, Sometimes the cost of shipping was more than the actual cost of making the bubble wrap. So one of my first projects was to reduce the uh, shipping cost for this product. So I came up with a, a, a inflatable bubble, a flat bubble uh, that you see on the right side, which is a flat sheet. And we can wrap, uh, uh, wrap this and ship it to the customer at a much, much lower cost. And um, we also designed an inflator. The customer can take this inflator, which is probably a little bigger than the size of your uh, backpack. That small machine can take this giant film and um, inflate it at a much higher speed, more than 200 feet per minute, and make the instant bubble. The customer loved this product for two reasons. Number one, they could buy a low cost product because of the low, low shipping cost. But the main reason they loved it, they could save tremendous amount of warehouse space uh, uh, to store this bubble. For example, Amazon, one of our biggest customer, they use more than 100 truck loads of bubble wrap every single day in a single location. So that is, if they want warehouse to store it, that's going to be larger than the uh, the whole block in the street. So they they loved this idea because they could save so much warehouse space. So it was a win-win situation, and um, the company alone may uh, spend uh, saved more than fifty million dollars just on the shipping cost per year. So that was a significant uh, invention for us. That's awesome. And everyone think of all the bubble wrap that you have touched and, and uh, had to encounter and had to use. Uh, uh, Charlie had a role to play in that in the last, in the last few decades. Uh, we, we should, I'm sure there'll be questions about plastic and its role in the world and uh, how you feel about the pollution and all of that. We'll get to those questions as well. So now let's talk about another invention. Are you ready? Which one would you like me to go to? Uh, the uh, produce bag and dispenser. All right. So this is my favorite invention of, of Charlie's, I've got to tell you. And by the way, everyone, please write in, tell us where you're watching from. We want to bring your greetings. Before we go to that, before we show you uh, my favorite invention of Charlie's, 85 patents, but my favorite, before we do that, let's look at some of the greetings coming in from around the world. Uh, Jonathan Borstein is watching from Union Square. I know Charlie lives outside New Jersey, but I mean, outside of New York, but spend lots of time in New York. Uh, he and his family are, uh, are people who love to go out and go to restaurants and all of that. And we're sorry that we're not able to do that. But Jonathan is from Union Square and he was my guest last night because our, our show yesterday was with the mayor of the town of Milford, Pennsylvania. And Jonathan was co-host and this was an amazing show. Please go back in my archives. Uh, the mayor of Milford, he was the first in 1990, the first openly HIV candidate to run for office. And now is the mayor of a small town. And he talked about the AIDS crisis and what he learned in that time and how it applies to everything happening today. Uh, let's see, Johnson's watching and says, hello. Makrand is watching from Manhattan. Uh, Dimitrov says, hello. Uh, Dimitrov has a scary mask, so I'm not sure why he has that. And uh, and uh, Jonathan is saying happy birthday to Rose, and lots of other people are are watching. And um, uh, uh, Animesh is uh, watching as well. I've got so many folks here. Guy three says yes, and Animesh is giving you uh, the voila. I, I forget what this is. Tada! Uh, <laughs> emoji. Are you an expert in emojis, Uncle? Um, I don't use that much. <laughs> okay, we should we should point out you're not you are a technical genius, but you're not necessarily an emoji. Or <laughs> That's social right. Media, social I media. Use the hand sign. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, and uh, Leka is watching from Kerala. All right. Okay, that's my mom. Hello, Leka. Yeah, she she says hello and she sends her love. And uh, my dad sends his greetings. Hi, Charlie, the inventor. Good to see you. And, hello, Katie. Good uh, to see you. Uh, this is great. My, uh, it's great to have my 
father and mother watching my godfather so it's perfect and uh rose says hi rose is uh joining from milford connecticut where we were just talking about and uh, she missed the show last night uncle uh charlie because uh it was her birthday so we wish her a happy birthday 141 days she's worked with us uh and uh my dad says the lockdown has done you some good you're looking prosperous now you know in india what that means right when we say you look healthy what does that mean <laughs> well you walk around i guess <laughs> yeah it also means that in in kerala when we say you look healthy that means you've put on a little weight oh uh, okay okay I, uncle, I didn't uncle, get that yeah yeah uncle charlie has always been too skinny so we're we still you still look too skinny to me but i think my dad is saying you look healthy uh and my uh, and rupa says hello and she's uh 300 plus ideas 85 patents nikhil's watching from connecticut hi nikhil great to have you here as always uh makran says wow you're an insightful innovator and uh he's he's put in a link that you can look at and our friend uh stefan kaplan also from new jersey ramsey new jersey have you been to ramsey new jersey yes i have yeah everyone uh let the inspiration flow thank you for sharing charles and uh stefan will have his own show at 10 a.m eastern that you can see and ann paul augustine is watching where who, tell us who this, this is well uh, she's my niece and she's expecting a baby next week all right so uh greetings niece great to have you here and who is this watching from chicago that's my daughter <laughs> Hello, Crystal. Yes, uh, Crystal, hi. Uh, we've known Crystal since uh, she was a little kid. And as I told her, now she has her uh, own, own child. I like to say, like, babies having babies. Time flies, doesn't it? Sure does. Yeah. Sure does. Uh, Terry is watching from, oh my God, Terry, Terry is watching from Las Vegas, where it is only wow. 6.30 in the morning. So she's been up. <laughs> She's tagging her son, who I knew as a little boy, and now he's an engineer and graduated. Uh, and Terry was a guest on my Vegas show. Uh, what can you tell us about Las Vegas that is okay to share in public? Uh, for me? Yes. What is uh, your favorite? Well, uh, well um, remember, yeah, one we, second, just, just remember, your grandchildren are watching and your <laughs> wife is watching. So what can you tell us? Well, it's about my wife. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she, uh, we went to Vegas and she bought a book on uh, how to play the blackjack. She read the book overnight. Next day, she went to the uh, one of the casinos. She won $800. I, I could not believe it. So I, I, I always play the uh, slot machine. That's my favorite. So, so why didn't you just take out all the money in your bank and give it to her to play? She could have just kept playing. Uh, I, I let her keep it. <laughs> <laughs> I want my hand exercise for the uh, slot machine. Yes, the slot machines. That's right. Uh, let's see. We've got the whole family watching. It's it's so it's so nice. Uh, my dad says the whole family is watching from different parts of the world, as it is a joy for us to see Charlie. And my mom says so nice to see our great friend. Hope to see Mary also in the show. Maybe we can uh, entice her to join us at the end. Um, we have so many uh, comments coming in. Makran said we love to pop bubble wrap right uh that's one of the things that's a kind of exercise for people it's also kind of therapy just uh, it is a therapy yes a lot of psychiatrists use it yeah but, uh, uh, you know give it to the patients yeah and, and then ron, ron thomas is watching from dubai ron is a dear friend of ours uh ron uh, has been on my sunday morning show ron i need to get you on this show as well have you been to dubai yeah yes i have i love that place i okay. want to go back again okay uh, and uh, Nancy is watching from Ohio. T tell us who Nancy is. That's Crystal's uh, 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 mother-in-law. Yes, yes. Hi, Hi Nancy. Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Thanks for watching. And uh, Ann Paul is telling us uh, she's watching from Staten Island. Tell us about the whole family. Well, it's my uh, my brother has uh, two uh, children, um, Anne and uh, Bobbin. Uh, both are married and both are expecting uh, their first, uh, Bob and expecting the first child uh, in two months and Anne is expecting her first child uh, next week. Wow, that's uh, that's amazing. Uh, let's keep going. Let's see all these greetings. Uh, 
Rupa is watching from the living room uh, here, and Ron is laughing at the joke about being healthy, as we say. Sheila uh, Antapan is watching. Hi, Uncle. Who's Sheila? Uh, that's Mary Sanis. Very cool. Uh, Hello, Sheila. <laughs> and Vandana, our producer, says this is so inspiring. And Anne is sending good vibes. Great to see you. Miss you, Uncle. Love and hugs from all of us. Ashok is watching from Trivandrum in Kerala. And uh, he says, inspiring indeed. Uh, Sheila says, we're proud of you, Uncle. And lots of questions coming in. We'll get to the questions in just a moment. Sheila says, Uncle, you are great. And, uh, and uh, our friend Steph says, I'm a blackjack guy myself. <laughs> and Nancy says, my favorite thing to do is pop bubble wrap. So that is uh, pretty cool. There's even an app, I think, where you can do fake bubble wrap. Uh, and absolutely, you can, absolutely. You, you can break that. And Alam is saying hello. Uh, so many people watching. So now we're going to tell you about my favorite invention of Charlie, something that you have used, all of you have used anywhere in the world because hundreds of millions of people have touched this product. So you are solving, an inventor solves problems. And one of the problems is if you go to a store, a grocery store in the 80s, 90s, you, you want to take vegetables you, you pick up the vegetables and then you have to reach for the bag uh, to pull, you know, from the bag dispenser, you have to pull that and you need two hands because it was a wide bag, you have to pull it. And this gentleman changed that for everybody by doing something really simple. So let's first show the invention and then we will you will tell the story of this invention. So here it is. So tell us the story of this. Well, like you said, in the olden times, they used to have these large plastic bag rolls. Instead of, uh, uh, in spite of using both hands to unwind it, they also need both hands to tear off the uh, bag from the uh, from the uh, from the bag roll, and then open it up. So what we did was, um, I we took the large bag and folded it into four, and made a narrow strip, and then wound up into this. Uh, this compact bag roll. Then I designed uh, a dispenser. When you put them together, you can pull with one hand and it automatically dispenses it. Once you dispenses it, you open into a large bag and you can put your fruits and veggies. And the key of this for everybody to understand is there's a hook that then helps you tear that without having to tear it like this, right? You have to, you need That's to, right. to tear you, it. You just keep pulling it and it opens up. So you, in this photo, you cannot see it very clearly, but there's a metal hook. You all know it from going to grocery stores. And so this kind of invention changes the bottom line of a company like Sealed Air because millions of people are using it. Millions of companies order it, isn't it? Right. Uh, and but but now if somebody goes to the store and looks at the at uh, at the store, it won't say Sealed Air because the company sold it, right? Right, right. It's. Uh, and today, 95% of all the United States uh, uh, supermarket uses this product. It's, it's a huge was a huge business before we we sold it. And, and there, was, uh, there was a story uh, when we introduced for, for the first time. We went to the store to watch people how they react. One lady pulled up this uh, this bag and she saw a narrow bag, and she looked at the banana. She said, "This is this probably for a banana," and she threw the bag out. She didn't know. How to do that? How to open it up? <laughs> and then she she moved back and watching other people come in. Then somebody else came and uh, took the one bag and he opened it into a large bag. And then we saw this lady came back and picked up the bag she threw out. She opened it up and used it. So it was a learning curve for every product. One of the things that I have noticed. There are things when they're invented or you encounter it for the first time, you're lost. You don't know what it does. But then suddenly it clicks. And then you always wondered how you ever lived without it, even though you never knew you needed it. That's right. right. That's, that's one of the things that Steve Jobs would always say is that, you know, he he doesn't always follow what the market needs because he says that people don't often know what they need. And so there are, that's another way of looking at innovation. But tell me about that feeling that day in that supermarket first when she thought it was a banana were you like oh my god this is not going to work and then when you saw it open how did that what is that those feelings like well, see see we, we went there on purpose and we pretended as if we are we are uh, customers but we were observing the uh, the customers 
want to find out how they react, what are the problems they're going to have, um, and if they make any comments. And we, we listen to them without them knowing that we are the people who invented this product. So we get a lot of ideas. The, one of the main reasons for any invention is that we have to know what the customer needs, not what the customer wants. Customer probably wants something, but that probably not exactly what they need. So you have to know exactly what the problem you are trying to solve. And you cannot solve a problem without knowing exactly what it is. So you need to know, look deep into the problem and find out and define it, the problem, before we start uh, attacking the, try to solve the problem. As you look back at your career, Charlie, what are the feelings you have when you know that you've helped so many people in tiny ways? We're going to show some of the bigger things you've done also, but some of the tiny ways, how does that feel? Well, it, it feels great. Every time you see a product, when I go to Home Depot, we saw these uh, insulation bubbles. Go to the supermarket, we saw these. This, and every, every time I get a, at a, a package, I have bubble wrap inside. And um, every time I piece, buy a piece of meat, under the meat, we have a product that uh, I invented uh, many years ago. I mean, it's a great feeling. That, so uh, talk about that. This is one of my other you know, uh, package products that you made so important. Uh, this looks very simple, but there's an absorbent pad, pad for meat trays. Uh, when you buy chicken or meat in the US, this is lying under the, you know, between the meat and the styrofoam tray or whatever that uh, that right. uh, that uh, material is. Uh, why was this needed? Why isn't the styrofoam enough? Well, well uh, for two reasons. Number one, it soak up all the blood and keep it away from the meat. If the meat sits on the blood, the bacteria grows and the meat gets spoiled very fast. So this is one way to, to keep the meat fresh for a longer period. And it is a very simple design. It's two plastic film with an absorbent material in the middle and put a several holes on one side. These holes are one way valve. So the blood goes in and it won't come out. It gets trapped in there. So it is a unique way of uh, keeping the uh, meat away from the uh, blood and uh, keep it longer. Another reason is uh, if the uh, blood floating all around the tray is a very unsightly uh, uh, sight. People don't like to see blood floating in the, in the, in the, uh, in the pad. So it's another selling feature for the meat. So, so you so that's that's a way in which you were able to help the food industry as well. Folks, if you're just joining us, we have another 20 minutes or so with Charles Cunnan Carroll. He is the author of this book. It's called The Inventor in You, and I have it here. And uh, he is the holder of, and I originally said 70 patents, but it's 85 patents and more than 300 ideas that he has helped refine. And he's got in this book a really important workbook at the end so that you can think about how you do your own uh, work as uh, trying to invent or uh, change things. So there's lots of places you can take notes, as you can see. So we'll talk all about that, about how you can do some inventing in just a couple of minutes. Uh, meanwhile, please tag this show, share it with your friends, we want everybody in the world to know about Charlie and know about his book and also to be inspired today. That's why we're doing this on a Saturday morning. Many of you are tinkerers. You know that you like to do things in your garage. If you know somebody like that, please tell them about Charlie. Please tell them about this book so that they know about it. And here is, for those of you who are new to the show, this is our daily global show that's running on scroll.in. And he is one of our 260 guests and more than a million viewers have joined us, 100 million social impressions. We've been live every single day for uh, 143 days. And we're able to do that only because of the support of everyone here. So Charlie, are you ready now to give us some specific tips to help us with, with our way of, uh, of thinking about invention and ideas? Are you ready? Uh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Um, so let's, let's. So I'll, I'll uh, let you uh, take it away. But before that, let's just see if there are any comments coming in. And I see uh, uh, lots of comments here. So first, who is Stephen Voss? He's my son-in-law. 
Uh, <laughs> hi, Steve. Steve, by the way, uh, your whole family is fantastic. But I want to give a shout out to Stephen because he's the closest to my line of work. He's a photographer and photojournalist. And he says, so great to see this discussion. Watching from DC. Love Steve, Charlene, Luke, and Lena. And uh, Ashok is inviting you back to Kerala. Uh, Charlie's from a small village in Kerala called Kumlanji. Is that Kumlangi, right? right. Kumlangi. Uh, yeah. And it's um, you had to go by ferry to get out of the. Uh, the uh, not anymore. We have a we have a bridge now. <laughs> we have a bridge. That, that bridge uh, made a record. It took 25 years to build this uh, half a mile bridge. Okay, but but it it got made, and uh, that's great. Uh, Johnson Arimbur is watching. He's uh, uh, Mar Mary's uh, nephew. Okay, and he's saying hello from Trishur and he's giving you an elbow hello. bump. Hello, Johnson. <laughs> Nancy says, each and every time I'm in the grocery store and grab a produce bag, I think of Charlie. Always. <laughs> Nancy, that's us too. And um, uh, now Terry says, can you invent something that opens those bags? Okay, so she's taking a little dig at you, Charlie. Uh, well, what is your well, the, the latest design that opens by itself. I don't know if, if it's near your your supermarket, but it's coming. Uh, oh, seriously? You're, you're yeah, not joking? Seriously, yes. Oh, okay. When you pull it, it, it kind of opens up by itself, so you don't have to. So, but that is that is the process of invention, right? Yeah. yeah. Getting it's, it's every time you invent it, you will find more problems and then you keep on inventing it. Every time you solve a problem, there is an invention. So Mohammed has a suggestion. Wouldn't it be easier to take the bag first and then put your items in it? So uh, what is your answer to that? He's saying you didn't need your invention. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he can make some money, that's the way to do it. <laughs> Look at all the supermarkets using it. Yeah, so there must it's be a reason, right? More than $100 million business. Yeah, $100 million business. Thomas Gunn is watching uh, Kunjunj and Ruby watching from New York. It's my brother and sister-in-law. Yes, very right. nice to see the whole family. Uh, uh, here is my father saying, Mukesh Ambani's dad told him to go to the market and see what you missed there and invent it and produce it. Today, he's one of the richest men in the world, as, <laughs> as you know. And uh, uh, Nancy says, also used with berries. The, the uh, meat tray uh, packaging is also used for, especially, I think, blackberries. They, they rot very fast, right? Right, they right. Back very yeah, fast. Absorb the moisture. Yeah. And, uh, uh, keep it dry or keep it moist. It depends on which, what do you want to do. Thank you. Uh, Terry says, yeah, Sri, you have many amazing relatives, inspiring. Yes, I have great relatives, uh, those I didn't choose. Charlie is somebody we chose as our, our relative, as our as my godfather and godmother, Mary. And uh, Makran saying happy birthday to Rose. Dilip says, thinking out of the box and keeping it simple. That is also a good rule. And uh, Lizzie Philip is watching. Who is that? Lizzie Philip. Oh, this is uh, with uh, uh, the Engineers Association uh, president. Yes. And, and great to see also when you started, Charlie, not so many women engineers, right? And now That's we right. see many more That's uh, women right. engineers. Now uh, they're outnumbered. Yeah. Uh, Vandana says, I wanted to visit Kumlangi ever since I watched Kumlangi Nights, one of my <laughs> favorite Malayalam films. Okay. Yeah, it's a great movie. Wait, they made a movie about your small town? That's right. Why? Well, th this is one of the uh, tourist, tourist attraction now. It used to be an island. When, when I, I was born, we didn't have any electricity or running water, no cars, no radios. And uh, now we turn it to be uh, one of the uh, uh, biggest tourist, tourist attraction. And great place to see? live, great place to visit. What is, what, if, I go, if I go to Kumlangi, what will I see there? Uh, you probably see everything you want to see. A lot of natural beauty, a lot of uh, 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 backwaters. A lot of fishermen, and uh, that, that's that's great. So I'm going to because people may be wondering how to spell it, what this is. So we're going to show people Kumlangi Nights, and this is this movie, a 2019 movie, <laughs> uh, and there we're looking at it. It's a Malayalam language drama film directed by Madhu Narayanan. So I've not heard of this film. I'm sorry to say, but we'll see if we can find it. It's set in the in the village of Kumlangi in Kochi, Kerala in southern India, and Kerala is the state where 
my family lives and my parents are right now in Trivandrum, Tiruvananthapuram, the capital of that. And Makrand is asking to send us a link, please. I don't know if it's, uh, is it available on Amazon or Netflix? Do you know, Charlie? Uh, well, about the movie? Yeah, do you know? Uh, it should be in the YouTube. Okay, in YouTube. Uh, okay, and Dilip says, this is my show, really different, informative, and a great presenter. Thank you. It's not the great presenter. It's the great guests, 143 shows, 250 plus guests, including the chief scientist of WHO, uh, Samya Swaminathan, the director of pandemics of WHO, plus entertainers, doctors, lawyers, all of them have come on to our show. We're, they're so generous with their time. Look at Charlie spending time with us on a Saturday morning. He could be playing pickleball right now. And, and and being beaten by uh, his uh, family in um, pickleball, but here he is sacrificing his time to be with us. So now let's give people some tips from The Inventor Is You. Please give them some concrete ideas. Well, uh, people ask me, how do we invent things? Um, Sorry, Charlie, can I ask you one thing? Charlie, can I ask you one thing? If you can just sit back, if you want, if you're holding a piece of paper, just oh. stay in one, yeah, just if you can, Sit back, and if you're if you're holding it to read it, you can bring it closer to you. No problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, they asked me how do we invent things. Um, I'd say there are four ways to do it. First one is to identify a problem that you need to solve. For example, in the COVID crisis, uh, in it, first time they came up with a test kit to test the COVID, um, it had a lot of issues. It took too long to get the results, and once you get the results. They were, um, uh, had a lot of false, po false positive and false negative. So that's an area uh, the inventors looked at it and they came up with a solution. So that's one way to initiate an invention process. The second way to do it is to identify an um, improvement in an existing product. Uh, again, I like to link that to the COVID, which is the uh, topic of the day. Uh, the first uh, ventilator uh, came out. It was very expensive, very bulky, cost about $50,000. But how did they solve the problem? As the more, more and more patients came out, they, they had a real shortage. So the inventors worked on the problem. They modified it. So now one ventilator can be used by eight patients at the same time. So you increase your supply by eight times, at the same time, reducing the cost by one eighth. Uh, another way to do is to uh, is to come up with a, uh, uh, a, a identify an unmet need that need to be resolved. And in this case, uh, again going back to the uh, uh, corona, how do we stop spreading the virus? And the uh, scientists came up with three ways to do that. They came up with a mask, they came up with a hand washing, and they came up with a social distancing. And the last area how to come up with an invention is to identify a new use for an existing product. A good example is your cell phone. Cell phone was invented strictly to be used as a, as a mobile phone uh, to make the phone calls away from home. And uh, when the product came in the market, People got excited and inventors tried to come up with other uses for it. And thanks to their effort, today an average person uses a cell phone only 10% of the time to make the phone call. The remaining 90% of the time it is used for something other than making a phone call, like searching the internet, uh, watching videos, listen to the music. You can make the payments. You can use it as a camera, uh, video games, um, uh, as a GPS, and you have uh, hundreds of uh, uh, new apps coming out every day. So these are four areas where you can start initiating an invention process. Thank you. That's very useful to know. Uh, what has been, you know, we want we want to be clear that you've obviously had uh, 85 inventions, 300 ideas, but tell me about the, the, the invention that got away, where you found it, you know, you failed at some point. Talk about that, please. Well, um, I worked on a, see, when we were working on the absorbent pad, I thought there may be a better way to do this. So instead of focusing on the pad to improve it, I, I tried to think outside the box. 
I said, what if, if we don't use the pad? So I modified the, uh, the tray and it, it had created a false bottom and put the horse in it. So all the uh, fluid will go through the hole and get hidden under the, uh, 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 the false bottom. And you can actually tilt that without spilling the, uh, 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 the blood. The company was excited um, uh, by looking at this product and we applied for a patent and um, I got the patent allowed. But unfortunately, two weeks later, patent office called me, we are taking back your patent right. So they found out in Netherlands, somebody applied for the patent two weeks prior to what I did and I lost the chance of doing that. So I was very disappointed and I lost the, uh, uh, the right to that patent. So that was a very disappointing story. So that could have been a moment where you're defeated how did you bounce back from that? How did you decide not to be not to give in? Well, uh, we came up with you know when we look at that pattern, how we uh, uh, design it and how we write the claim. When you look at the claim in a pattern, and that's a key, you can work around that pattern to make it better. So we came up with a better design for that uh, for that, and we could compete with that product. That's uh, that's awesome. Uh, let's show you, let's show everyone your patent wall. Uh, tell us what this is. And I believe you have one of these nearby to show us in person in a minute. But first, tell us about this wall. When we walk into your home in New Jersey, it's a stunning thing to see this wall, which of course, everyone who's been to your home knows. But tell us about it. And uh, I know you can see it from where you're sitting also, but how does it feel to have this wall of patents well, uh, it's a great feeling when I, when I walk into that room and looking at the, all these patents. See, um, uh, the company, every time I get a patent, the company gave one of these plaques. And towards the end, they, they decided to put uh, five patents in one plaque. And um, as uh, you probably can see, uh, let me see. They put uh, five small... Hold on one second. Yeah, go ahead. You have to hold it steady. Hold on. You have to hold it steady. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So yeah. bring it down a little bit so that people can see. Yeah, the patent. Yeah. You, yeah. Okay. This, this pull it back. I'm sorry, Charlie. Just pull it back a little bit to work closer to you. Yeah. Now talk, please. Okay. So the, the company used to give me uh, one plaque for each patent. And then uh, my office got a little crowded. I have an office wall. So they said, we're gonna give you a plaque every fifth patent and put a small description underneath <laughs> like the uh, fourth. So that's how, uh, and otherwise uh, I wouldn't have enough space to put the, all the plaques in the wall. Okay, so we've been looking at a lot of photographs uh, of your wall, of your, photo, uh, of your awards, your patents, all of that. So I thought it'd be fun to show everyone a photo of your family, or part of your family, you've got obviously a big family. Uh, so we're gonna now show a, a, a photo of your family. So tell us who's in this photo, please. Okay, ready? Ready, Charlie? Yes. Okay, here we go. Who's in this photo? Oh my God, uh, Steven, <laughs> Lena, Charlene, and Luke. <laughs> and are they a photo? Let's see, say hi. Hi. Wow. Hey. Hey. Wow. <laughs> hi guys. <laughs> Good to see ya. Look at that magic. The photo came to life. <laughs> Great so tell us, uh, guys, tell us what's it like to listen to your grandpa? Really nice. Yeah, 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 we nice like, um, what? like learn about uh, this. He wrote this book, so it's nice to learn. There's been a lot of events um, related to his book, so it's nice to learn more about Nice. Well, thank you for being here. Tell us how, how you're doing through this crisis. Are you guys studying at home? What are you doing? Well, sometimes school hasn't started yet. Yeah. So, so we're just staying home. But we have like a schedule yeah. and we have different classes. Who's a better teach homeschool teacher, your mom or dad? Mm. Wow. I don't know. This is this is going to be a little bit dicey. <laughs> You're getting political on us. Because yes, we are. Good morning in Washington, D.C. First of all, we should have said that. And that's that's Charlene and Stephen and their wonderful kids. Uh, we are so grateful that you would uh, be up and with us here today. Uh, Charlie, talk to them for a couple of minutes. I'll, yeah. I'll step outside. 
just a, a you know uh, look and um, lena had a project when i wrote the book and i asked them to come up with a, an idea for an invention and both came up with the two great ideas so it is in my book you can't tease so, us like that you got to tell us a little more maybe the kids can tell us what the ideas were look had the uh, backpack idea because he he said you want to say about it or you want me to remember uh no i don't think i really remember can you say okay. Well, he said he has a problem uh, taking stuff from the backpack while he was walking. So he thought some way he can twist the backpack to the front um, so he can open it without taking from the uh, from the body and opening it up. So I thought that was a great idea uh, to uh, to solve some of the problems. And Lena had uh, she wanted the bike ride and she wanted to listen to the music, and uh, she said. i can take my cell phone and take a rubber band attached to my uh, handrail and uh, ride the bike and listen to the music and uh, that you know she so she wanted to come up with a way to attach the uh, cell phone or the radio to the uh, to the bike awesome this is this is so cool guys we're so happy that you could be with us why don't you ask uh, your grandpa or your dad a question <laughs> What is one thing you've always wanted to ask him and embarrass him in front of thousands of people? This is your chance. Either Charlene or Stephen yeah. or uh, the kid. Right? A piece of advice that you would have liked to have uh, have had at at your age when you uh, first came to the United States. Uh, so the question. Uh, just, so the question was, uh, uh, Charlie. Sorry, can we have you sit back, Charlie? Can we have you sit back, please? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so the question is, what is a piece of advice? that you wish you had had when you first came to this country you obviously had an incredible life an incredible career uh you don't need any advice you did it all but what is something you wish you had known then that you learned the hard way maybe over the years well i i i wish i had a family here to support me i was 2000 miles away uh, 12000 miles away i came as a student uh, when i was 20 years old um i didn't know anybody i could hardly speak the language and i had uh, $6 in my pocket and i landed in new york city uh, in the middle of the night and uh, i missed my flight next flight to boston and um uh, i didn't know what to do so i helped a lady to carry her luggage and she asked me where i was going and uh, uh so we got uh, i got friendly with her and she finally helped me to take to my destination and uh, i didn't have anything to eat i didn't have any money to to you know with 6 it, it was a it was a struggle so i wish i had a family here to support me when i was here we should make it clear what the 6 dollar story is because uh that's what the amount of foreign currency that well actually it's actually it's 8 dollars 8 dollars that's right i spent i spent 2 dollars in germany for a, a bottle of beer okay <laughs> Uh, uh, that was intended for it. I, I didn't. I didn't know they're going to charge me for the beer. I thought the airline will pay for it, but at that time I had to pay. So, so first lesson for these kids is: if you have eight dollars in your pocket, do not spend two dollars on drinking something. Okay, <laughs> uh, that, that's the first lesson. If if that's your total amount of money, so the government of India would allow people leaving to only take eight dollars with them. That was the law because India didn't have. in a foreign currency in their reserve so they they really kept a tight fist on it and uh and those all those stories you hear about indian immigrants who came here in the 60s and 70s they came like that with 8 dollars in their pockets and many of them have gone on to do so well charlie as you uh, before you we let the family go and get back to their saturdays first let's ask them what is planned for saturday during pandemic let's hear from lena and then from uh and then from luke go ahead Yeah. Now we are in Washington DC. We're actually in my clinic office because the kids had their first dentist appointment this morning um oh. in in my building. So we're we're not home um first time masks off in for a doctor's visit, right? We've had mm -hmm. we've had a few virtual ones, but um and, and look, make sure you wear wear your mask. Don't even take it out when he examine your teeth. 
<laughs> Are you guys nervous to see the dentist? Oh, look at that mask. Oh, that that is cool. nice. Wow. That's a really cool one. Um, are you scared to visit the dentist, or it's all it's all good? Well, it was pretty good. Okay, very very cool. We should we should tell folks that I thought this was uh, this was your home because of the photographs behind you. Those are uh, those are uh, Steve's photographs, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. And and one of the th are those those fracture photographs. That you you print print them on glass. I exactly. I've seen this in Stephen's house. Everybody, there's a beautiful uh, uh, thing that you can do for your best pictures. You you take them and then you send it to a company called Fracture Dot Me, and then they print them on glass and then he puts them up in the home and they're they're stunning. I mean, it's for you have to, you have to start with good photographs. That's the secret, not the not the glass. It's the great pictures. And Steve, you got to come on our show and talk about your work. Uh, uh, taking pictures of everyone from Michelle Obama on down, right, uh, is the right way to, do, <laughs> to look at it. And uh, also news photography, uh, the pictures of uh, uh, Robert Mueller going in to testify, things like that. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll definitely uh, give you a chance. Uh, if, you're, if you're able to join us, we'd love to uh, see your pictures with everybody. So uh, before, you, before you guys go, uh, after the dentist's office, after mom's office, what are you guys doing? The streets are pretty empty in DC, so it's, it's nice to kind of explore. We've been doing uh, some bike rides downtown. So that's, that's okay. Nice, nice, very good. All right, we'll let you folks go. Uh, shall we get grandma in here as well? Is, wow. if, if Mary is ready to join us, she's gonna pull up a chair so she can say hello. Mary? And let let her join us as well. Uh, one second, so she can she can sit there. So Charlie, you can make room if she's she'll be coming. You can make room for I think her. She's in another role. Yeah, so she's watching. She knows, so she'll come down. That'll be fine. Um, okay, so um, thank you guys for being here. This was a nice surprise. Uh, did you think they were a still photograph, Charlie? When you when they came on, they looked they were acting like they were a still. Yeah, photograph. I thought it was a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so wait, Grandma's going to be here in just a minute. Folks, if you're watching, uh, our shows are not all about family, but when we can, we love having family on, not just my family, your family, because we want to connect more than anything else during this time. Our colleague, Steve Taylor, has been saying this is about social closeness, physical distancing, and that's really important. And there is Grandma. Hi, Mary. See, when you said grandma, I'm thinking, where is this old lady coming from? <laughs> <laughs> That's why she didn't come. That's right. You didn't show up because it was grandma. That's right. So let's have Lena and Luke talk to you. Hello. You know, this morning we were trying to fix the computer. So Lena comes on the phone, gives the clue. Um, a puppet, press the mute button. This is the button to press. And Luke also giving him ideas as to how to go about in the computer. And I said, oh, my God, we are getting lessons from my grandchildren. They, so that they, they are our great. tech gurus. <laughs> uh, that, 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 that's right. So talk to grandma. Go ahead. Lena, go ahead. So we have FaceTime every week and we play jokes, we play games, um, we play charades and those kinds of things. That's the way to keep in touch with them. So we have an awesome time with them. The, the hardest thing with the pandemic is not being able to see your children and grandchildren and not being able to hug them and kiss them and all of that. That has been the most difficult thing for us. So. We did do a drive-by. We, we drove up to New Jersey one day and we Stopped in the time. And we didn't recognize them. <laughs> so they came on the week of July 4th and they came to the driveway. Charlie and I were playing pickleball in the driveway. And I said, some car is coming into the driveway. Charlie said, they're just turning around. So then they and we started, kept on playing. started blowing the horn and there they come. But we weren't able to hug them or kiss them. They stayed apart with the mask on we had to put the mask on but at least we were able to see them so that was great that that is a lovely sad but important story that you were able to see each other that's the main thing let's see who else is watching Heyman says greetings from elmwood park new jersey 
We know so many wonderful innovators between here and India that can benefit from this wisdom and experience, but a fear of going the next step, sharing this with several of them. Hey, month and everybody watching now with a uh, pandemic, you can invite Charlie to come up and do a Zoom call with your uh, with your audience. Uh, tell them to buy the book and do a Zoom call with your with your association or just your friends. Hey, month is one of the best connectors I know in the world, and many of you know that I am, I love connecting people. So if I say Hemant is a great connector, he's the ultimate connector. So Hemant, uh, please do, anybody write to me, I'll connect you with Charlie and uh, definitely check out uh, the book. You can find it on uh, Amazon. It's called The Inventor in You by Charles Cunnan Carroll. Anand is watching from Andhra Pradesh and Makran is watching and says, soap wash, hand wash, if half-witted mistaken messaging by the White House. Uh, and so many comments coming in. Leka says, Luke and Lena have grown big. And uh, that's my mom watching. And Terry says, beautiful family. Uh, there's only part of the family. We should make that clear, right? There's a Chicago part of the family that is a one hour behind. They're probably just relaxing on a, on a Saturday morning. It depends on when my grand grandson is in a good mood or not yeah. so he's only one and a half years old so yeah, what we... i wanted to tell you the the main satisfaction for charlie in writing the book is if he says after reading his book if one person comes with an invention that is the biggest satisfaction that he has so all of you listening please start to start inventing, inventing. <laughs> Yeah, look, look, look at what Ashok says. We would like to connect with Charlie. I will email Sri Srinivasan. So he's going to email me Sri at Sri.net. I'm very easy to find. S-R-E-E -E at S-R-E-E.net. Write to me and I will connect you. And um, because that's the easiest way. Charlie's not on Twitter yet. Uh, and uh, not yet. Oh, 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 yes, and now. <laughs> Steve, help me with that. Uh, oh, wait, there is a Twitter account. Wait, tell us. Uh, guys, tell us. Hold on. Steve, Steve, help me. Steve, can you? Steve, what? Do we have a working Twitter account or we're getting a Twitter account? Yeah, I think the handle is Inventor Charles. Okay, so we'll double check that to make sure Inventor Charles. But also you can write to me and I'll connect you. And uh, uh, what about a TikTok account for your grandpa? What do you think, uh, Luke? Is that a good idea? Mm, I thought it was just recently working on, uh, he was working on having a band today, right? Oh, yeah. It might not be TikTok after yeah, today. Yeah, I think today is the last day for TikTok. That's right. Uh, Donald Trump is working to have a ban, uh, but Microsoft is also looking to buy TikTok away right. from, buy it off of uh, ByteDance, the Chinese company that owns it. Meanwhile, as you know, India has banned TikTok, and we uh, did an episode with one of the leading Indian tech experts right after that ban of 16, 59 apps uh, from in from Chinese apps have been banned in India. You can go back and see all of this on our archives, youtube.com slash Srinet. So many comments coming in here. Rao says hello from Warsaw. Have you been to Poland? No. 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 Yeah. Okay. And uh, Mary Auntie uh, and Paul Augustine says great to see you here. And uh, Ashok is the is part of the Next Step Career Academy as Chief Operating Officer. So this is what you're talking about, right? Next step after your career. Uh, you've you've continued to be a writer. You reinvented yourself. And I tell everybody, I, I work with an organization called Encore.org, E-N-C-O-R-E.org. They're a group that, among other things, helps people think about their next step in their lives after they retire. But they do so many other things. And in Kerala, the retirement age used to be for government 55, which is so young. Uh, in, 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 and Charlie retired well after that. Uh, of course. So uh, we're going to let the DC family go. Bye, DC family. Bye. 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 Yes. Nice to see you. Bye, mom and dad. Uh, you th thanks for coming out, folks. Uh, so let's let's talk to Mary Auntie here for a second. Uh, Mary, tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us what it's like to have Charlie at home after all these years. He used to travel a lot. Uh, he used to uh, be so busy. Now, do you have too much Charlie in your life? I don't think so because I really have a heavy, been a busy practice. I do telemedicine. So I start working from 10 o'clock till almost 6 o'clock with the half an hour lunch break. So um, 
the we, I, we have a schedule we play pickleball together then we play cards together and then it's like seeing movie time and that's the end of the day so it is still very busy schedule with the pandemic so many um, since i'm a psychiatrist so many people are coming with the more anxiety depression family issues you know abuse in the family you know they cannot do things together so all the coping skills that they have like going out going to socialize with their friends going for dinner things like that they cannot do so trying to teach them different coping skills at this time but people are extremely stressed because the uncertainty when is this going to end has been a major issue so I have to ask Charlie, what is it like to be married to a psychiatrist? <laughs> well, she keeps me sane. <laughs> uh, I have a free session with her every day. <laughs> you, uh, but now Mary can tell us publicly, does he really need a lot of extra help? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> do, HIPAA, do HIPAA rules apply to spouses? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I, I have the reverse issue. Um, not, not, uh, as you know, my wife, uh, Rupa is not a doctor, but we had the same internist general medicine doctor <laughs> for a while. It was a terrible idea. Never share your email password and never share your, uh, doctor with your spouse, because what would happen is that doctor would, uh, would, uh, complain to her that I wasn't taking my cholesterol medicine and all of that. And so we <laughs> said, it's a bad idea. We're not going to have on the patient side. Side. No, no. <laughs> maybe you sign the release to talk to for him to talk to her otherwise it's two hundred and fifty thousand dollar fine and jail term yeah, that's that's what it costs to do uh yeah. if, you, if you break what's called a hipaa patient law right, right, right. provide privacy and so there are a lot of uh, laws around that uh yeah. we should we should we uh, mary auntie we should tell charlie uncle that i had actually invited you to be on our show very very early in the process long before we thought of having uncle uh that was many months ago but now i hope you will now be ready to come on the air yourself one day and 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 talk about your work because a lot of you could help a lot of people through this uh and we're so grateful that you that you would here. love to do that <laughs> thanks Ri. no you told me you were worried about the technology right and now look That's at the right. you know we are taking your course certificate course Oh, good. Good. Yeah, good. Every Saturday, that has been one of our things to do. Thank you. That's so you, you helped us a lot. If you well, make you. proficient, I'll take you up on it. <laughs> so that that's great. So now I um, I uh, want to uh, share with you an, another greeting here. Hello, Charlie. How nice to see you on Sri's daily conversation. I'm so glad that he's featuring you with your book, The Inventor in You. We knew there was an inventor in you in the many years that we have been friends. But we realized only when the book came out that you have done 70 of them. And these inventions are down to earth, things which people use in their daily lives without, without realizing the importance of such innovations. They have made them, you have made them practical, convenient, and fashionable, and enabled the market to make use of it. With 70 inventions, you must have crossed several frontiers of knowledge. And I'm sure one of these days, somebody will take your accomplishment into account and give you a Nobel Prize. That is what we are waiting for. I'm also sure that Mary must have helped you in this process by keeping your mind steady, because after all, she is a psychiatrist. All the very best, Mary and Charlie. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Still waiting to see you in New Jersey. <laughs> So we're glad we were able to bring, for those of you who didn't get it, that's what this, my dad, T.P. Srinivasan, author himself, former diplomat, and he has his own TV shows and video shows and all of that. You can follow him on Twitter at Sreeniv, S-R-E-E-N-I-V on Twitter, and he, he's written eight books. So Charlie, you now have a challenge in front of you. 
uh, to to start the books to on your next book uh, as 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 well. So before we go, uh, it's ten nineteen already here. Uh, Charlie, remind us a couple of the main takeaways from the book. Why should people get the inventor in you? What will they learn, even if they think they're not inventors themselves? Well, like I said before, you don't have to be a scientist, a scholar, or a genius uh, to come up with an invention. All you need is that uh, uh, a, a desire to come up with something, and you believe in yourself, identify the problem, then uh, come up with the solutions. I always uh, say, uh, take the challenge and try to identify a problem. Don't wait for the problem come to you. You take a proactive approach and then use your method to, to create something new, useful, different, and unique. Or create something that make our life a little better, a little safer, and a little easier. So I hope you will find that inventory new. Here you have a list of silly inventions that made millions. Hula hoop, wacky wall walker, the top down squeeze bottle, pet rock, slap bracelet, slinky. Uh, you talk about the future, 3D printing, robotics, AI, space exploration, medicine. All of these are ways in which uh, people who didn't expect to be uh, inventors became accidental inventors. We've seen that in my world of digital and social media. But there is also a lot of luck involved, isn't it, Charlie? And absolutely, of, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. One of the things that we should all acknowledge is the educational system in India that gave you the basis for your success, the immigration system in America that allowed you to come here, study, and stay, and you were able to thrive. That immigration system is under jeopardy today because of uh, the, the rules changing. And that this country gave you a chance to not just survive here, starting with $8, but thrive and build a beautiful family and a career. So talk a little bit about what America means to you, Charlie, please. Well, uh, it's, it's been a long road for me. And uh, like I said before, I didn't have uh, anybody to support me to give the uh, right advice. So I kind of, learn as I as I go uh, and um, that gave me a lot of confidence uh, towards the end. Um, I, I, I started feeling that I could do things without uh, getting help from others. Uh, that confidence helped me a lot to, to be successful. All right. and, and, and tell us about the role of your success, the role of this lady in your success. <laughs> Uh, you're talking about uh, this lady, right? <laughs> well, we have a great relationship and uh, we've been honest with each other, uh, support each other um, every way we can. And uh, she's been a great inspiration for me. Even when I wrote the book, she, she's been very patient. Sometime I wake up uh, seven o'clock in the morning and won't get up the, from, the, uh, from the desk till two o'clock in the afternoon. And, but she's been very patient with me, uh, supported me all the way. So she's the best. That's, she is the best. And we're, we're, one day we're going to convince her to come on our show and talk about uh, how people, uh, her work as a psychiatrist and helping so many people uh, over, o over the years. We should also acknowledge that Charlie Uncle is a great cook. And uh, Indian men of his generation typically are not uh, involved in the kitchen, uh, it would be fair to say, but uh, he, uh, loves to cook, and I love going over. Uh, there's always food, warmth, and a lot of love in the home, and it's been an amazing uh, uh, treat and honor to uh, be part of your family and all of us together. So we'll let you go. What is on? What is on tap for a Saturday at the exciting pickleball <laughs> uh, tournament today? Well, uh, every day we go out. We go out in the driveway, driveway, go to the mailbox, and pick up the mail and come back. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a new normal. Today's the day to get okay. Indian food. So we go and you know pick up the food. So that's something great. And then he's reading a lot. I still have patience to see today. So it will be a busy day. All right. Well, we want you to be uh, careful 
we presume that your grown children are like us grown children. We call our parents and yell at them to not leave the house. Uh, <laughs> tell them to wear the mask. I presume you're doing, you get the same calls and then yeah. you're calling them and then they call you, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yes. Everybody's saying stay safe. All right, thank you so much. We'll let you go. Thank you very much. Everybody who's watching, uh, please follow uh, Charlie Uncle on uh, Twitter. We have to confirm that the Twitter handle is Inventor Charles. And uh, he's taking my course. So once he does more of that, he'll be doing more tweeting. His book is called The Inventor in You. And he's available to do Zoom calls with your club, book club, inventors club, your social club. Uh, gather, you know, for a next Zoom call, invite him. Uh, write to me, three at three.net. I will connect you. And uh, I wish both of you the very best. And I'm sure we'll be talking very soon. Uh, thank you so much for being here. That, thank you, Sri. And thank you all for uh, for tuning in. Support yes. And giving him the opportunity, Sri. So yeah, there, there, so there, there, there's so many comments still coming in. Um, my dad says, Coconut Chutney by Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Makran says, Kerala. Actually, I have I have invented a few recipes. Yes, yes. <laughs> Makran says Kerala Kuta is cool, and uh, and Ashok says long live the relationship. Uh, Rose has put in a link to the Amazon, a link to the book, and Makran said for immigration, best free direct resources are unique issues. She's he's linking to his favorite lawyer, and Ashok says long live the relationship. Nancy, who's been watching. These are nice in-laws, right? Not all in-laws go along, but <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Are, are watching and uh, following you on Twitter. So uh, I, I can't uh, let you go without first checking out your Twitter. So let's let's make sure I have the right address uh, here. And uh, the Inventor Charles, that's right. Yeah. That is yeah. his Twitter handle. Um, I didn't know that. How did I not know about this? So now- well, just, just I, happened two days ago. <laughs> okay, that's why. So we're gonna show everybody his Twitter handle so that you can all follow him and he's going to post ideas from his book. He's also going to give you uh, tips on uh, on this. So the other thing you can do, Charles, my recommendation is to put your email address here so that people can uh, uh, connect with you. Otherwise, you have a website, guide to invention.com, right? And there right. it is, the book that you have. Uh, there's also the contact information uh, here as well. You can contact him. Uh, there's the email address, charlie.cunnancarroll at gmail.com. Right. And uh, the website is called guide to invention.com. Guide to invention.com. Everybody check that out. And uh, uh, that's it. Wonderful uh, to greeting from Sri's father. Uh, that's from Rose who's saying that. So everybody check out Charlie. Check out the website. It's called guide to invention.com. And uh, check out all the information that's there. And we'll say goodbye finally. This is what we call an Indian goodbye, right? We keep saying goodbye. Thank you so Take much. care. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Bye. I hope you had as much fun as I did with that episode, folks. It's it, As soon as I get off the air, this will be recorded and live on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And I'm live on these channels every single day with this show. We have very important uh, episodes coming up that we want to talk to you about on Sunday night is Sunday Positivity. Please join us for that. We also are going to be talking about the importance of fighting hate on uh, during COVID. We'll be joined by my colleague and friend Jennifer Lazarus, and we will be interviewing Oren Siegel, who is the vice president at the Center on Extremism at ADL, a leading anti-hate organization. That's Monday night at 9 p.m., and we have several other shows in the works. We would love to have you join us for these shows. Please email me if you have ideas on how we can work together. You see my email address right here. If you'd like to be a guest, if you'd like to be a sponsor, if you have a theme idea, a collaboration idea, we would love to work with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Let me thank our sponsors one more time. We want to thank nonbelievable.com divinely delicious cookies on a mission. Each box of handcrafted cookies provides two meals to those in need, 20% off with the code SREE. -E. One way for you to support their mission, but support this show is to buy some cookies at 
www.sreeinvestments.com and use the code SREE. We also want to thank our sponsors at Hotstar. Start Premier Nights. Watch the year's biggest blockbuster streaming straight to your screen. Exclusively on Hot Start. Hotstar.com slash US. World premiere films premiering at Hotstar.com slash US, including Loot Case. Check that out at Hotstar.com slash US. And Sunday around here is very busy. We have three shows that we work on. The first is the Sunday New York Times read along. We read the New York Times out loud like crazy people on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Our guest is Matt Goldman, New York Times bestselling author, Emmy award winning TV writer, whose credits include Seinfeld, Ellen, and the new adventures of old Christine. Please join us at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. And when that show is over, I am the co-executive producer of this show. It's called She's on Call. Two of my surgeon friends, Dr. Sujana Chandrasekhar, and Dr. Marina Kurian host She's On Call. Find it on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube. And their guests are Dr. Benjamin Chang, who performed one of the first hand transplants in the world, and Dr. Claudette Lajam, who is in orthopedics. And they will be with us tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Please join us. Find at She's On Call on Facebook and on Twitter. And then at 9 p.m. Eastern is our positivity show. That's it for now, folks. Trying to stay positive in the middle of all this terrible, terrible news from around the world, but especially in this country. Please stay safe. Please wash your hands. Please, I beg you, wear a mask, even if you get the wrong signals from your president or from your governor or from your mayor. Please wear a mask and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Stay socially close physically distant. Thanks very much, everybody. We're saying goodbye right now.